Welcome to the Clive Barker Podcast, episode 115. On this episode, we'll be talking about news. So we'll talk about Hellraiser Judgment and the Imaginer books 2 and 3, uh, the art books, that is. The Clive Barker Archive, the new website by Phil and Sarah Stokes, uh, who also run the official website, clivebarker.info, uh, Pinhead Figure, the great and Se- the new edition of the Great and Secret Show, the Weave, Weave World TV series, and and uh, the new Night to Breed tape pa- trade paperback uh, edition of the um, the old epic Night Breed comics. That and a bunch of more stuff. And before we get to that, I do want to say thank you to our sponsor Don Bertram and Celebrate Imagination. So Don Bertram volunteers for the. Texas Children's Cancer Center. He volunteers at a, in a program called Arts in Medicine. So the paintings that he makes, if you buy them, you go to the, click on the banner on our website that says Celebrate Imagination. The big, you'll go, find a link to his Etsy page where you can buy his artwork and the proceeds, a large percentage, some and you know fifty percent or more sometimes, goes to the Texas Children's Cancer Center directly so uh, not only does he volunteer there but the paintings he makes also the proceeds go towards that charity as well so uh, we couldn't be prouder of this sponsor don bertram and we thank you for your support thanks for joining us again we haven't had a a a real episode of the podcast in a long time we do we've done three audio commentaries in a row yeah yeah Yeah. well the last one was the plague yeah, and uh, before that, it's Hell World. Hell World, and before that, we did the uh, Saint Sinner. And I think up next is going to be Hellraiser uh, Revelations. <laughs> yeah. God. So, oh God, yeah, at least that's it's short. Be hard. Yeah, but it doesn't feel short when you're watching it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it's like, but how long is it? Seventy-two minutes. And yeah. it feels like you, you're watching like a. Three hour movie. It's I know. just one of those movies that has a horrible pace because everything's so bad in it. Yeah, it makes me feel really fidgety, like I need to get up and leave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just so, Yeah. So that's 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 gonna be uh it's gonna be fun to do it with you guys because you know, at least uh, the movie goes by really quickly when That's we're true. just chatting yeah, together, and it's if, much more enjoyable. I don't know about you guys, but I have to watch it by myself because I don't know anybody that would sit down with me to watch that. <laughs> well, same yeah. here. Yeah. I'm not going to subject my wife to uh, watching Hellraiser Revelations. Yeah, exactly. It's like, and, and Jennifer won't watch horror movies at all, but I mean, even like, I'm sure with Sarah, it's going to be, you know, yeah, I'm sorry. This is a really terrible movie, but we have to do it for the podcast. Yeah. Right. I just watch it by myself. And, yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's, it's probably it's like speed it up another twenty percent. <laughs> yeah. How do you how do you do that again? Because that's a really good idea, Jose. Oh, when yeah, I'm watching it up. on VLC, that's Video Land Player. Uh, that's like the Swiss Army knife of video players that I usually use on my computer. Yeah. And it's like when I'm watching it, if you go to Video playback, and then there's a setting called speed, so you can you can go like slower or faster. I think uh, Blu-ray and, players can do it too. Sure. Yeah, that's right. They yeah. can. But sometimes they will cut the sound when they're fast forwarding. So I, I went to iTunes to to look into renting it again, and it's not there anymore. So you then I just went on eBay and bought it. I bought the Blu-ray I know, for you like that three dollars. Oh, so they took it oh, out of man. iTunes? That's, yeah, that's uh, curious. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I wonder if there's a cost for continuing to host something, you know, and it, and it gets to a point where uh, you know they're not getting enough downloads to. to I wouldn't work. be surprised. Yeah. yeah, I would be surprised on that's a good point. A- everybody who's seen that movie is done with it, probably. Mm-hmm. Except for us, we're yeah. we get <laughs> <laughs> this will be number three or four now. Well, you know, there's always going to be people, especially after the new Hellraiser comes out, that are going to do, you know, a, a full full franchise marathon. I know, for example, oh. Andrew Furtado, the editor, oh, no, he, the Nightbreed yeah. director, Scott, he mm-hmm. does what it's called like a, a binge brigade or something yeah. on his podcast. So I think he did that once but with I Hellraiser. His podcast is over now. Didn't he just end it? Oh, the I'll have to check. The podcast, he had like a funeral episode that was their last one. Oh, I, I remember yeah. that it was a, a, a cafe where they used to do it that closed. 
But um, oh, oh, maybe that's what it is then. I don't yeah, know. Not the podcast. I can imagine that podcast would be a lot of work having to keep up with all everything that comes and goes out of Netflix and Yeah. <clears throat> so this is today is a news episode. Uh we briefly were talking to Simon and people who fought, you know who are on the Clive Barker groups on Facebook might have seen that he commented that he was ready to to, to talk to us but he wasn't feeling good. So um so we're you know back again to doing the news episode. True. Yeah. He, uh, he was just coming out of chemotherapy. So we rescheduled, which is fine. I mean, yeah, we want yeah. our guests to be absolutely comfortable when they yeah. come on the podcast. So, uh, just stay tuned for that. I'm sure it's going to come up pretty soon. Yeah. And we still plan on doing, um, Everville, uh, in the near future as well. Absolutely. So now, you know, now that our next commentary is Hellraiser Revelations, we may be a little more, uh, more motivated for doing regular episodes. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess so, on what we've got going on on the site uh, before we get into the news, um, well, I did a Tuesday Tunes at, here a couple of weeks back on um, Jill Tracy's The Fine Art of Poisoning, which is a, a song and a music video that Clive Barker uh, really liked and he, he, he commented on. So mm, I saw that. Uh, yes, it was really interesting. What, how did you come about that? Or her, uh, the artist? I'm trying to remember. Oh, a friend of mine, uh, Robert emailed it to me or, uh, or sent it to me in in like private message or something and and said oh and clive barker even likes this so i, I li- looked into it a little more and uh and then i got the and and i did this post and i got the exact quote and then the authors or the, or the artist started talking to me on twitter you know yeah i saw that he even that's always thanked fun. us yeah yeah it was pretty cool yeah clive barker called it the music both seductive and terrifying that's good praise right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, Get that it's out a of cool kind of creepy song. It's kind of it's the kind of stuff that I like that sort of balances out like being sweet and kind of creepy at the same time. Mm-hmm. Do you know if this is from a movie or something, or is it just like a, I, an album? I think it's from an album. Yeah, I think okay. it's just her music. Yep, that was a, that was a cool article. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing more of her stuff. Uh, now that I've now that I've heard that one, I might you know start downloading more of her her music. We also made the the Saint Sinner audio commentary uh, <laughs> some time back, which yeah. uh, was fun. Yeah, and I, uh, like I, say, I hope. A, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say how oh, it's a guilty pleasure I'm on now. I mean, it's just so so cheesy. Yeah, like absolutely. you know something like a, <coughs> you know, a yeah jaw. It's like. Uh, there's certain films that touch you a certain way or make you feel it's like, you know, I just really liked it for just, I don't know, had some really cool ideas in it. And it, it, there's some, there's, it's, it's a stark contrast to, you know, the later ones that we did, like, um, uh, the plague, right. It's not, it's not boring. No. Mm-hmm. And the movie is always moving forward. And, um, and there's some cool stuff that happens, but there's some nonsensical things. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot of nonsense in that movie. Yeah. Unkar and the Kier. But some of that sucking. nonsense was kind of fun. Yeah. That's yeah, it was. Interesting. It was. It was a sci-fi movie. It was cool. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, feelings, you, you came up with some feelings about Hellraiser Judgment, Rob. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, those feelings Oops. have kind of changed uh, after mm-hmm. reading some reports afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's okay. like a, I mean, I'm kind of just up in the air on this movie right now. Yeah. Just you know, wait until I see a trailer. Yeah, we, sure. we, I mean, we know how Doug Bradley feels about it and what he, you know, in his experience with the pre-production and and uh, we, we we've got a little bit of plot synopsis and we know, you know, we know now what the what the Cenobites are going to look like and I guess we, we'll talk about that more later. But and if you go on the uh, YouTube or if I can find it, in, uh, I'll get it. Or I'll send it to you you can attach it to the okay picture. there's a trailer for uh what i think it's pretty much going to be the characters of the the what the Cine, the, the other oh really Cenobites. you saw it jose remember uh sent it hmm. sure uh was it on um like a makeup test uh, like a, it says kick it was a kickstarter thing that failed he made oh, a trailer. Oh, right yeah. right the movie judgment yeah the, yeah judgment. the early one i think that, that's pretty that, yeah <laughs> And Tony Cliff keeps saying it's it's got the same title, but it doesn't have anything to do with the previous script. It doesn't yeah, have anything yeah. to do except yeah. for the fact that it might, you know, be uh, started out as a Hellraiser story, then became Hel- then became Judgment on Kickstarter, yeah. and then it became Hellraiser Judgment and, again. And he, 
And then Gary Tunnicliffe got kind of mad because I don't know why people keep calling it Hellraiser X Judgment. It doesn't have an X in it. Yeah, I, I, I like the idea of an that. X. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well own it. So, yeah, so, Rob, you did a two-part article uh, called My Personal Feelings on Hellraiser Judgment. If you haven't yeah. seen it, go on the website. You can find it on the blog. Yeah, and uh, and then we did a Hellraiser Hellworld commentary, which some people, you know, there are some people who argue that that movie is even worse than Revelations. Mm -hmm. I don't know. One, it's hard. One gentleman that, there was one gentleman that actually liked the, the commentary. It was like, I don't know why everybody calls this movie bad. I don't uh -huh. Oh, you mean he liked name. the movie? He probably didn't like our commentary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. No, I think he was a fan of the movie, and he just yeah uh, was taken back by uh, how I guess people. Some people think it's bad. I, I don't. You know, that's fine. Everybody got an opinion on yeah, what sure. they like. I just hey, you know. Well, we, if it works for him, that's that's, yeah, that's, that's great. Am I, who am I to say? You know. And we don't set out to trash these movies when we do our commentaries. I mean, I think that we're pretty fair, and if we see things that are cool, we still you know call yeah, those we out. Comment on that. Yeah, and say, hey, this is kind of a cool moment here. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did say that. So. But, but sometimes there are things in movies that just poison the movie for you. And whether there's cool stuff in it or not, you just, you know, you just can't overall say that you like it or it's a good movie. And I guess that's personal choice. Yeah. Uh, oh, and there was an April Fool's that I think you fooled about probably half the people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People get really riled up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because anything Clive Barker related that gets people's hopes up. And, and yeah. it was kind of or dash very up. obvious. It, it was obvious that it was a, an April Fool's post. I mean, you even thank the April Phantom for the news. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> the April Phantom. So, so oh, that we, was a nice touch. <laughs> yeah, but but the, there's a weird Facebook sort of culture where people only read headlines and they don't they don't click through to the story sure. and, and read the whole story. Yeah. So as usual, yeah, April Fools always get someone that yeah. people are like. I can't believe they're doing this. How how is this possible? Well, and it's like, well, read the article. <laughs> and, and this uh, year, April Fools kind of snuck up on us, and we, you know, we had planned on doing maybe two or three, but we just did one of them this time. Oh, you remember? Uh, we got in semi trouble once because we said that the Scarlet Gospels were going to be delayed until the the year. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we said that, be that released, it would have been released this year. Yeah. yeah, it would have been released this year. And people were so furious about it. And yeah. even like Mark Miller emailed us saying, hey, guys, where where'd you get that news? I'm well, having trouble I, yeah, with a said, publisher. He said, I don't know where this news came from, but can you guys put a, make a story saying that it's not true? I'm like, actually, that news came from us and it's an April Fool's post. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't even know it came from us. We just – he he just – you know, this rumor was spreading around and he didn't, he wanted us to help put a stop to it. Yep. So that that's that's how it happens sometimes. In April Fools, people really end up believing in it. But yeah, uh, and and all the publishers were cc'd on that email that he forwarded us. That's true. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I was getting a little concerned. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. they were like, Mark, can you tell your people this isn't true? I don't know where this is coming from. Yeah. That, that you know, <clears throat> this time it was pretty obvious, and, yeah. and still some people, like you said, they only read the the title, so eventually they end up. To, to our credit, uh, the paperback is coming out here soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we were kind of right. Mm -hmm. And you finally finished your Imagica uh, collection update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the whole – I've got one of every single card now. And I spent my entire Sunday sorting out my a giant box full of common cards into stacks of, of you know multiple copies of them so that I could create – complete sets of common cards to sell on on ebay so i've got five complete sets of common cards and then and then like another 10 that aren't that you know aren't complete and then i'm going to sell the uncommon and rare and uh and promo cards individually do you do you have an idea on how much you're going to ask for each one uh, yeah yeah i'm not sure okay jennifer thinks i should just do like an open bid or whatever but Mm -hmm. I kind of have the, have an idea of just for a complete set being like twenty five bucks or something. Oh yeah, that would be heck. I'd like to buy one. one of those sets from you. But it's this complete set of common cards, so it doesn't have any right. rares or uncommon. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, the, totally. That's going to be worth uh, posting if you do a, an auction for that. Post it on a collector's corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all, and I've got, a, and also I'm going to put up a. I've I've kind of started 
writing up a guide with the you you know using the spreadsheet that I got off of some old you know CCG website that did that should, tells you every single card and whether they're common or uncommon or rare and and I'll I'll, I'll make sort of a collector's guide kind of a thing. Um, the one area where I'm weak is I don't know how to play this game. I've never never tried ne- never tried to play it. I think I played Magic: The Gathering a few times with my brother, but. You know, I just yeah. I just am collecting it. I'm not I'm not trying to play I, it. That's what I would do too. I I just want to get the cards for just the characters and see what they look like. Yeah, so kind of get an idea of what they look like when I reread the book. <laughs> I know? do remember seeing on eBay uh, years ago, and I actually was considering bidding on one. I remember seeing some of the original artwork uh, being sold on eBay for yeah. some of the cards. It still um, shows up once in a while. Yeah, it does. Uh, because there's a lot of cards, there were a lot of artists that were doing uh, the illustrations for the back. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I remember seeing a few. So, well, how yeah, do you feel pretty- since you've got them all now? Oh, yeah. it, it's it's good. I mean, geez, I've been doing. It's been like since 2009, maybe that I've been trying to collect these. Mm-hmm. And Mark Miller well, helped journey. me a lot. That's kind of how I became friends with him. Is because he and I were trading cards. It, it's kind of funny. I don't know if I can say this or not, but he would get into the he would get into the um the Clive Barker's library and start ripping open packages <laughs> looking for cards. Oh, he has a big stash. Yeah. To himself. Yeah. Well, to play that game, I guess you need more friends that have complete decks that can play with yeah. you, so. Yeah. But yeah, I would just look at them for the illustrations, really. Yeah, exactly. You know, they were published from a – was it a company called Zarapushu? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have the – of course you have the mat or – wasn't there like a sort of a mat or something that you would play yeah, on? Yeah, but it's the reverse side of a poster. So ah. I framed the poster and, and, uh, and I sent three or four copies of the poster to Clive Barker because one time I had him autograph it and he's like, I don't have one of these. And he told his assistant to – Give him my car, you know. Give him his card so that I could mail him a copy of the poster. That's funny because he probably has some on a crawl space in his house, and he just doesn't know about it. Yeah, well, it's hanging up in his in the office now. Sweet, yeah, that's awesome. Oh, nice. You can say, "Hey, I sent Clive that thing." Yeah, and there was one time when Mark mailed me one, mm-hmm. one of those posters, and I kind of I kind of laughed. I was like, "Yeah, that might have come from me." Cool. I should <laughs> take a picture of that and add it to the show notes. Hey, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, right, right. It's really cool. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about that. I have a notebook full of them. Uh, and then we did the Plague audio commentary for Clive Barker's The Plague, um, which is not as fun as Saint Sinner. It's more of a kind of a plodding, sort of boring, everybody's whispering all the time. Yeah, the last three that's... commentaries are are going to be, I mean, we picked the last three to... Are the bitch of the bunch? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they really are. <laughs> then, hey. Yeah, but then we're going to get into good movies uh, eventually. Oh yeah, that's yeah, the great thing about it is that we're looking. Huh. Yeah, actually, this is our last. Um, Revelations will be our last bad movie. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. And then we're going to do uh, Hellraiser one and two. I think is it? I can't remember what. I think it's uh no. We go on to. The oh, quick so and, and the Yattering and Jack. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Yattering and Jack is still. I wouldn't consider it to be a good one, but uh, but well, it's going to be a fun it's, one. It's our transition yeah, <laughs> between. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Quicksilver Highway is kind of goofy too. Especially the first story, the Stephen King story about the the chattering the, teeth. the chattering teeth. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do. Do you think that we need to do that part? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's a I've good been point. I, I've been sort of turning that over in my head, and I, I guess good if you're point. when you're, if you're out there listening, do you want us to talk about the Stephen King half of Quicksilver Highway, or would you just prefer we skip it and go straight to the to the uh, body politic part? Sure, that's a that's a good idea. Yeah, um, I like that idea. I really do. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I wasn't a big fan of that one either. Even I didn't like. <laughs> yeah. Choice, we might tell people to sync up when the the Clyde Barker story starts, and yeah. Christopher Lloyd is talking to the guy to the pickpocket and the tent, and yeah, uh, right before the body politics starts. Yeah, and also um, the Yattering and Jack will probably be recording at the same time, so we'll be putting those out together, or you know, one after the other. Yeah. Sure, that's a good idea. Yeah. 
because they're only for the price of one, which yeah, is free. forty minutes in like twenty two minutes, something like that. Mm-hmm. We got to play the uh, Tales from the Dark Side though opening when we watch the Yattering and Jack. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah that's fine. That so right. in other news, uh, I guess we're going to be going through some old posts um, that we did, uh, especially in March, mid-March. So this one came out. It was the first image of Pinhead that was released from Hellraiser Judgment. And it was put out as a poster mm-hmm. uh, with a tagline, Evil Seeks Evil. Yeah. So It's yeah, like a Craigslist ad. It's a, <laughs> a misconnection. <laughs> Missed connections. Uh, I left this box. It belonged to my grandmother. If you've opened it, please let me know. <laughs> oh, God. So it, it was just too much of a filtered image that Gary Tunnicliffe put out. And so it's still hard to know if yeah. that pinhead looks good or if it's just like the fact that there's a lot of contrast and a lot of filters on it. That's it had true. a lot of people saying, hey, that's not so bad. And it's like, well, that's not that's not him standing on a set. Right. But And I never right. really thought about the... <laughs> The filters and all that stuff and how, you know, I mean. Yeah, it, it's a nice looking that. poster, except I don't like the tagline very much. Also, yeah, I'm, curious to know, I'm curious to know what the performance is going to be of the of the actor doing it. If he's going to emulate Doug Bradley, is, <coughs> is he going to change like the way, you know, Pinhead speaks and stuff? So well, and it's going to be Doug Bradley changed a lot over the years. The, the Pinhead true. character changed a lot. I, I mean, my favorite is still in the original Hellraiser where he just, you know, would kind of stand there coldly and look at you. Oh, yeah. yeah. And when you kind see, of move uh, his head. Yeah. Yeah. And when you see Pinhead in Hellworld, uh, there's also the matter that Pinhead has like an extra 30 pounds than he had in the first movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and he's not as he's not in that white light, and I don't know. It's sometimes he doesn't have the black pupils, or the black, you know, this the pure black eyeballs and stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially, you know, one thing that always got me is in the the, the poster for the first Hellraiser. Uh, Pinhead doesn't have the black eyes. He has yeah, like the Bradley's blue eyes. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I think they forgot to put the the lenses, or they weren't comfortable, or he could only have them like twenty minutes at a time, or something. Yeah. Uh, because they were still they weren't proper, they weren't properly done by an uh, <coughs> optometrist for him, so he could only it would start hurting in his eyes. So uh, yeah, it, maybe it was the end of the time where he could, or maybe they took too long to set up the camera, or who knows. Yeah. I always thought that the blue what? eyes looked much better than the black eyes, but that's my opinion. Yeah, he he looks he looks. Um, I just love how dispassionate he is. Like when when he when he's when the chains are going into Frank at the very end of Hellraiser, and he mm-hmm. just he has no. It looks like he has no emotion about it. You know, one yeah. or the other. I know what shot you're talking about. Yeah, but that this guy, the new guy, uh, what is his name? <laughs> Paul T. Uh, Taylor. Uh, mm-hmm. I think uh, – I know he looks better than the last guy from Revelations. Uh, the guy from Revelations <laughs> yeah. just did not work. Nobody, I mean, nobody likes him. His face looks – just that – the guy just looked really yeah. – I don't know. He looked uncomfortable. Well, and then that, that cover they made where he's got that straining face and everybody said he's taking a crap on that – on that uh, yeah. the cover of Revelations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, so – We'll just have to wait it's, and see. It's, yeah, it's it's a bad position to be in, and it's 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 really something you do when you know when you're trying to break into acting, and you probably don't know what the, what the fans are going to do to you. Um, yeah, I'm sure the guy's probably got, you know, I mean, I have not seen the movie or his performance yet, but I'm sure he wants to do the best he can because that I'm sure he doesn't want to get, you know. Yeah, and and I think no matter how good he is, you know, there's a you're not Doug some, Bradley contingent out there. Um, and and I and the way I kind of feel about it is don't if you just don't don't do use pinhead and you know do yeah. other stuff. But, I do too. I feel the same way. Right. I mean, I I, I told Barbie Wild um, through email, and let me just find that real quick. She but, was she was asking me at one point. Uh, so what do you think about this? Uh, what do you think about this um, this new Hellraiser? And I said, uh, well. And I'm just going to quote myself here. Uh, 
I said that uh, without any disrespect for Doug, I don't think Pinhead should be recast. And if the franchise were to have a good, solid movie, it should probably rely on close-knit storytelling about the human protagonists and their quest, whatever it may be, lust, power, or freedom. And the Cenobites could be different in every movie to show us some variety and keep the Cenobite designs interesting, as well as leave the stage open for different interpretations of how hell is populated. Mm -hmm. However... The audience doesn't like drastic change, and reliable is usually comfortable. So the movies ended up relying a bit too much on the Cenobites, especially the Hell Priest. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you've got to uh, have Pinhead, and you've got to have a puzzle box, and that's like the mandate from from Dimension or, or the Weinsteins or whoever, and, and uh, everything else is just do whatever you want. Right. So I guess, you know, like you said, let's wait and see. Um, Rob, you posted some uh, photos that were released by uh, Gary Tunnicliffe, and I think it was on Bloody Disgusting, um, of the set that they were shooting already, the movie. So uh, yeah, we, we, we got to see some new set him, uh, Looks like a person uh, – he's touching up a person that's mm-hmm. skinned. Looks like a – Yeah, kind uh, of like a Frank a street, type character. Looks like a street uh, homeless person or something like that because uh, I read in one of the character – breakdowns or whatever that there is some kind of like a bomb a bomb in the movie you know like that's a mm. constant motif in the hellraiser films is like right right well, it, it, it is sort of, yeah it, it 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 wasn't in like five or six or no, seven I'm, just or the eight. first the first three yeah <clears throat> they did it in revelations too because revelations oh, right. i think was adapted from a, a remake script yeah and yeah. uh, part four was originally supposed to have some, but and uh, they could have shot, but uh, in Peter Action's script there was originally a uh, oh really street there was like a, a puzzle person. guardian type of person. Well, he wasn't really a puzzle guardian, but he hung outside the uh, the chateau uh, de Hoe or whatever it's called that's run by Delisle. Chateau just, de la Rêve. Yeah, yeah, they pronounce that. And he uh, it was like a 17th century street person. Yeah, he's got all these like you know. Uh, 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 oh yeah, I remember. He was he would talk to Le Marchand and ask him if he wanted to buy something, and then yeah, Le Marchand right, just starts right. yelling, "No more yeah. dreams, no more yeah, that's right. yeah. wonders, exactly. you know, an end to dreams," and then he just runs away screaming because <laughs> um, exactly. he just saw like the card players being skinned by Angelique uh, through yeah, the window. Exactly. So the I think yeah, that's, that's a good point. I think that was supposed to be kind of like a. A, bu- a puzzle guardian slash bum slash derelict. Mm. Um, yeah, they yeah, could have shot some of that. I don't know. Well, you know, uh, that's probably one of the scenes that they started cutting because they said, "Well, this is not really important." Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Yeah. So yeah, so go check that out. March 18, there's a post saying even more Hellraiser Judgment news and new set image. So you can see that in our yeah. blog. And then uh, two days later, there was um, there were some some other Cenobite designs released. Oh yeah, yeah. I just that report I think was talking about what Cenobites are going to be in the movie with Pinhead. It's going to be the Chatter, the third Chatter three, and mm-hmm. uh, the Stitch, Stitch twins. twins. And I think yeah. those, they showed up in uh, was it five Deader? No, 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 the 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 wire twins, Inferno. right? Inferno. We're in Inferno. Oh, okay, so that's going. These are the Stitch twins from Inferno. That's cool. Oh wait, that's oh, what... Stitch. God, man. Okay, <laughs> the wire twins cute. are the ones that like were were massaging under his skin, right? Oh, okay. Is that what those are called? Uh, to be honest with you. Yeah. Have... Yeah, I, I think in Inferno they were called the wire twins. Okay. Then there was a Cenobite called Stitch. That was a female. Then there was another Cenobite called Stitch that was a male that I think was played by Gary Tunnicliffe in Hellworld. Oh, okay. And as for the Stitch twins, I'm not sure who they are. Are these the ones that are um, – that come, that appear with like a stitching machine that are going to be like doing um, – if you read the, the plot for Hellraiser Judgment, mm-hmm. I think there's going to be the Stitch twins. There are two women that have – uh, you remember I was talking to you guys and I was I was making fun like yeah hey, he doesn't you know how, what if the new pinhead appears and then um, I was making fun what if it's a really small room how are all these centibytes going to appear inside that small room <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know or if someone that's... solves the box on a plane and then the stitch twins are left outside the plane <laughs> 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 yeah, that's fine so I think I like these. 
uh, if you read um, the casting I think that's call. That's the jury that, you're talking about. Oh, it's a jury. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the jury and the stitch. I remember are... there being someone who was going to have like a machine and was going to be stitching skins and stuff. So oh, yeah, that's the the jury, I believe. Okay. okay. So they are we confusing stuff. Stitch with the Wire Twins? There, there's something. Yeah, so. to, maybe we are. I just, I really, I can't. The Stitch. I just know the the Stitch Twins are going to be part of the group now. I guess that's the new group. Okay. 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 So I'm not yeah. really. I'm not so really we have sure a little bit team. of of continuity, I guess, from old, from some older sequels. Well, I'm definitely happy that the Chatterer is coming back. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Because the Chatter has always been a recurring motif in the Hellraiser movies. He's showed up in one shape or another. Either it was the Chatter Beast in Bloodline yeah. or Torso in Inferno, and now we're going to get another Chatter appearance. So, so that's this good. will be Chatterer Three is the one from Deader and Hellworld, right? I believe so, yes. Probably. There's been several uh, mix-and-match uh, chatters. Uh, either the, the costume gets different or the makeup yeah. gets a little different, so yeah. Was there a chatterer in, in Revelations? I can't remember. I don't I, remember. Good point. I don't think yeah, there was. No. It, it, no. There was Pinhead and Pinhead Jr., mm-hmm. and that's all <laughs> I remember. I, I oh, know God, that, I forgot about that I, guy. But I and the Puzzle remember. Guardian. Yes, right, and the Puzzle Guardian, and I cannot. Re- I know there was at least one other Cenobite, but I can't think of. I can't. Re- it was one. Of, it, it, I think that it's the one that looks kind of like. Yeah, it does. She looks kind of like a chatter, but they don't. She, I don't believe she chats. Her her teeth don't chatter at all. Oh, okay. That movie even just. So it was know, a female chatter. It's kind of a female looking thing. Okay, I'll look it up. Well, we'll we'll be revisiting. We'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Soon. <laughs> oh, yay. Sorry. So that uh, that came on bloody disgusting uh, dot com. So, yeah. uh, and then of course Doug Bradley um, did a couple of interviews because you know everybody wants to hey Doug what you're not in this movie what do you think about that? And so he did a, he did a few interviews on uh, Hellraiser Judgment and kind of elaborated a little bit more on his feelings and and uh, the the story about him you know not getting to read the script because of the non disclosure agreement and. Yeah, I mean, the thing with Doug is I think Doug, um, over the years, he's gotten a little, I wouldn't say bitter, but he got a little disillusioned about Hellraiser. And and it kind of comes off every time he has to talk about, hey, why are you not going to be Pinhead in the uh, next movie? And I think (coughs) his defense was kind of, it was kind of like, well, I don't think they really wanted me to be a part of this Hellraiser. Yeah. Because they recast it really quickly. They didn't even... Say what? We, what can we change? Can we change your mind? What Just do you work want? This out. Yeah. yeah, can work this out. And he, nobody said that. So they were like, "Okay, here's the script." Yeah, and he's like, "I'm not going to sign the NDA." And they were like, "Okay, then, thanks." And they then probably they just wanted somebody that they could hire for a thousand dollars. Probably, who yeah. knows? Or yeah. whatever. Uh, I mean, it's just uh, <clears throat> he, the things that the way he described is that he got a very specific, uh, you know, what do you call it? Those uh. Uh, NDA. Yeah, disclosed. it was very just right, for him. Right. It was it written was, towards him. It was really pointed, and the and yeah. it's like no talking untowards or out of turn at in elevators or in conventions, restrooms, restrooms. restrooms. What the heck? I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, that's just yeah. that's just so disrespectful. Yeah, somebody. and he said it sounded. That. It seemed like it wasn't even put together by an attorney, but by some uh, some hack that you know. And it, since it spelled out all these places where he couldn't talk about the movie, it didn't. There were a whole host of other places that were you know he could because okay. they were omitted. So I guess he took it as a dig on yeah. uh, on himself. I guess. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, you uh, can't can't blame him. Well, you know, I mean, this movie is coming out next year, so. Uh, at, the, I, at this point, I think they might have finished photography oh, because yeah, I yeah, haven't heard about this movie button. in a while. Yeah, they're yeah. probably uh, still editing. Yeah, probably still yeah. editing and post production and stuff. But I think, I think for now, we probably are not going to hear much about this movie at, at, until it comes out. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, let's see, let's see what happens on that. Yeah. Uh, frankly, I'm tired of Hellraiser. As a as a <laughs> yeah. personal note of yeah. mine, yeah. I'm just I'm tired yeah. of Hellraiser. Yeah. It's it needs to rest for a few years, and that's kind of how I feel about it too. Yeah, it, it needs to change hands at some point. I don't believe that we're going to get a Clyde Barker produced, a Clyde Barker written Hellraiser anytime soon. Even though 
Harvey Weinstein may show up at Seraphin to talk to Clive like he did a few years ago. But it's like I don't think that they're ever going to let it go because they lost Halloween franchise. They're not going to let Hellraiser go. Yeah, so well, and Clive's idea probably would have taken too long you mm. know, now because they put it off. They put it off for so long until now. Oh, God, we only have six months to make a movie or whatever. And yeah. Anyway, it's really they're hurting, too. They're. Financially, I don't think they're, the they're in a very Company. good position. Yeah, the Dimension, Dimension Weinstein, yeah. Whatever. Well, and, and and if they make this dirt cheap, they know that all the fans will still rent it or buy it or whatever, and it'll it'll make even more money because we or at least we all, what yeah, they put we don't in. have to see it. Yeah, but yeah. anyway, this is the Clyde Barker podcast. So going back to actual Clyde Barker stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I, Hellraiser has strayed so far at this point that you know, like yeah. like Clive said about Revelations, it's not even from my butthole. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, Imaginer two and three. So there's news about that, right? Yeah. So Imaginer two, the 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 clamshells, I think were already shipped out. Uh, I don't know. I haven't actually seen anybody post anything that they got them. Right? Have you? I haven't either. I've been looking. Well, I have a clamshell, yeah, uh, but do. we're under a, a small embargo in terms of review so far because we they want to wait until they send out the the non clamshells to the kickback uh, kickback Kickstarter Backers. people. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I understand that. So uh, I'm sure as soon as they send them out, they'll give us the okay to run a, an article on uh, reviewing Imaginer two. Uh, I've seen it; looks amazing. So. And there was a shipping update for the regular ones, and I think they were waiting for them to come back from the U.K. to the U.S., and then they were going to get shipped out from the U.S. or maybe the other way around. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. But it's – there's still I, – I think the, the, the upshot was that uh, people could start expecting them at the end of April. Mm-hmm. And there's pre-orders already up for Imaginer 3, which yeah. uh, if you've been following things, they're going to be – uh, the mantle of Imaginer collection has been passed on to Phil and Sarah, who are now running the Clyde Barker archive. And so they're taking up the task of coming up with uh, Imaginer 3. So I hope that, that that's progressing nicely there. So. Oh, geez. I mean, it, it's it's super fast that they're already they're already pre- – and they're not doing it through Kickstarter like like uh, like Thomas did with the first two. Um, they're, they're, they're selling it more like they sell their, their – um, Memory prophecy – yeah, yeah. Much, yeah. So they're they're taking pre-orders now, mm-hmm. which makes oh, yeah. sense because then they get mon- the money in advance to to pay for the the production of them. I Did like you, the uh, cover yeah, that they're using for Imaginary Three. It has that illustration of a man with a blindfold, oh, and then yeah. this weird organ with four eyes is growing out of its head. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like that. I like that illustration. I have. Have you any of you? I haven't pre-ordered yeah. this one. I, I can't. I don't have the. Yeah, that's that's Wanted my to problem too. Like I, and I was like, oh man, I haven't even gotten number two. I mean, I guess I did. The one that I paid for, I haven't gotten yet. I've got to so, get it. Uh, <clears throat> one of the attractive things that Phil and Sarah said is that, like you said, they're they're publishing this without a Kickstarter, um, so they're accepting pre-orders like they do for their memory, prophecy, and fantasy books. And they said the only thing the book is now being held for is the opportunity for one week only to have your name added within the pages of Imaginer 3 itself as an acknowledgement <coughs> of your ongoing support for the series. This offer is available until 20th March to supporters who uh, both order the deluxe edition and choose to upgrade to this ultra with thanks package. So I know this was until March 20, but we're just going – we're just going through the things that we posted on our blog uh, in terms yeah. of news, and I hope that someone out there has pre-ordered this and got their name in Imaginary 3. That's I mean, pretty If you cool. only listen to our blog, you re- I mean listen to our podcast, you really should go to our website also, and, and you can follow along the news there too and comment and stuff. I mean we, yeah. we do post we – do, we do share it all on Facebook and, and uh, Twitter and stuff, but uh, – but the the source of you know our news stories are on our blog, so we appreciate if you you know check there once in a while and and uh, comment. Yep, yep. Rob works really hard on the blog, so yeah. And 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 honestly, I get Thank a little you. I get a little sick of Facebook. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I can. Yeah, that's why I don't go to the, the Facebook on the, the the side pages that much. Yeah. So yeah, uh, and speaking of the Clyde Barker archive. Um, 
there's been new artwork added there. So go check it out. It's a really cool website. Uh, I haven't heard many people talk about it, and I, I haven't seen it show up that much uh, in Clyde Barker groups. Uh, yeah. So I'm just wondering if people are still unaware that this website exists. Yeah, uh, so it's, yeah. A, it, it's a really nice-looking site, and yeah. it's, a, it's a place to buy the Imaginer books and, um, and a place to buy the Memory, Prophecy, and Fantasy books because um, Phil and Sarah split those off from, the, from their, their main ClydeBarker.info site and put, made a special, a special um, this special website for that. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think they're really going to add some cool stuff to that site. So I'd yeah. really be, as a ClydeBarker fan, I'm really looking forward to seeing it. They, added some cool stuff like Jose said the, the other day I think it was just yesterday actually like and the one act the one act uh, was it from the says so what's that title of something about cartoons the secret wrote, life of cartoons yeah he wrote he posted like the one act version of his actual oh, wow. his paper oh, notebook fabulous. Mm-hmm. go check that out if y'all have time wow it's really good yeah, um, and the Clive Barker archive is going to be different from the uh, Clive Barker, the realclivebarker.com because realclivebarker.com is selling uh, older stock of, of uh, you know, previously published things. Yeah. You know, or maybe drawings and stuff, um, original drawings, and, and, you know, you can buy autograph things and stuff like that, but Clive Barker archive is going to be, uh, you can't get those things anywhere else. So, you, like, you can't buy memory, prophecy, and fantasy books elsewhere. I mean, this is the source. I guess Phil and Sarah are the source of those. Anyway. I still need to get the second and third one of those. Saving up for the second one. Oh, yeah. I, I've read, I, I still haven't read the third one yet. And I assume they're making, it's like going to be a continuing saga, right? Yeah. With his life. Yeah, I, I got to read more. I, I don't want to get behind. <laughs> <clears throat> I've been able to read much either, so I know what you mean. So the but, uh, the Gauntlet Press, uh, the Great in Secret show, we found out has some Clive Barker sketches that are getting added to it. Yeah, twenty seven black and white sketches. Uh, I put in my po- put in my the blog. I'd like mm-hmm. to see a black and white. Uh, has he ever done anything like show uh, uh, Fletcher and uh, the Jaff fighting? I've never I, seen any artwork about him. I don't. Like, or, I, I don't think so. I think I've seen like a. I think I've seen a drawing of the Jaff, but I don't. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Jose, are you still there? Yeah, I was on that. <laughs> just... Oh yeah, I'm still here. Oh okay. <laughs> okay. I, I was saying that uh, you remember you scanned that cover from the Great and Secret show that you have. Um, oh yeah. That has the, the rap- that has a uh, Groucho Marx in the cover. And, yeah. Yeah, and I think Fletcher and the Jeff appear in that cover, but they're yeah. not painted by Clyde Barker. I think they're painted right. by is it Les Edwards or Tristan or something like that. I forgot the artist of that cover, but yeah, that's the only time I've seen them. Um, I you thought know, I and, thought that Clive did it, but maybe I am confusing it with the, the the picture on the cover there. Okay, I don't know. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see what gets included in this edition. Mm-hmm. And what the price is going to be? Do are there, are there pre-orders already? You can pre-order, but I just don't know what the price is, though. Yeah, actually, I don't know if there are. Yeah, no, there has to be pre-orders up, but I just don't know what the price is. What price? Yeah, is. isn't this one the one that has yeah, is... uh, the, the the payment plan for the Great and yeah. Secret Show? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. the payment plan. Yeah, uh, just go on our blog and look up Great and Secret Show. You'll see all the updates that Rob and we have made over the the months uh, yeah. about this. Yeah. So, yeah. ClydeBarkerCast.com. And, That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and also, you have a little send voicemail tab on the side there. Uh, if you guys were not think... using it, we might take that out. But you know, just letting you guys know, you can send us messages from your computer onto Ryan's Skype voicemail. And it's really easy and quick. If you want to be more interactive with the podcast, you can totally do that. Yeah, those will go right into the podcast, unless you, unless you, uh, you know, it's like neo-Nazi messages or something. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious to know if people, you know, even know it's there when they come on there. Yeah, I don't know. I know that I know that for some people on their mobile browsers, it gets in the way when they're trying to read stories. Mm. Oh, okay. With older phones, I think it was the, because of the resolution, maybe. Sure. 
And so this Great and Secret show is coming out this summer as well. Yeah. And they said second quarter or third quarter of 2016. So yeah. it should be coming out soon. Mm-hmm. <coughs> hey, it looks really cool. I'd love to get it. Yeah, another book I can't afford. Right. So uh, uh, this Weave World TV series, I am starting to wonder if this story was not just a rehash of an old story. And when they, because when they said that, when they implied that there was a new writer, it almost, it almost reads like they're saying it's not Clive Barker; it's a different writer from Clive Barker. Mm. Well, so, I don't. <clears throat> so then, don't then that. if that's the case, then it's not even really news at all. It's just a rehash of the old news from November, I think it was. Yeah, you remember that it was about an app designer that was going to team up with a young pastry, pastry chef. chef. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> like, are you kidding me? What does this have to do with the world? Well, and then and then so maybe it's wishful thinking on our part that we interpret that to mean, oh, they scrapped that writer and they got a new person now. I but hope so. But that may not be the case. Yeah. It, it mm-hmm. might just be that they're that because if you read the original story. It just says like, oh, there's a, you know, Clive Barker's Weave World. Now it has a new writer. And it's like, well, yeah. maybe that means just somebody other than Clive Barker. Right. Deadline.com said they've shared a, an update on the status of the show that reveals the company has gone back to the drawing board with a brand new writer. So the company is CW. Um, right. But that could be a rehash of what they were doing in no, in November. Maybe it's that, you know, maybe that's the new writer, you know, from – Again, uh, a lot of projects that Clyde Barker talks about, sometimes they don't happen, like like the Thief of Always cartoon or something. I mean, who knows when that thing is going to come out. So with this one, I'm not too concerned about it because, hey, I like the story of the book. Yeah. I like the book. There's a 25th anniversary edition out there that's beautiful. And so it's like any television series is not going to take away from that. No. So I just I just hope that – they come up with a better story than this and that it's more faithful to the book because what, what it will take away from is that the chance of ever making a good TV series, right? Yeah. If they yeah. make a bad one, that's it. It's, it's, it's over forever. Right. How can, and how can you finish yeah. reading that book and come up with an app designer? To yeah. The and the pastry yeah, chef. I, I get I it. I it's so, it. um, it's so patronizing really to try to like, let's punch it up for the new generation. You don't have ah. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> right. So who knows? It might be it might be years away from from being done. So I'm not very concerned about that. I just hope that whoever they find to write it, it's going to be someone that's going to do a good job. And and it seemed like there wasn't even a rug, right? It was like a portal in in a, in yeah, a house. Yeah, Savannah Mansion. Yeah, yeah it's like they're just using the title as a way to yeah make a show yeah. for themselves. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, kind of like Saint Sinner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, have it is just in just in title only. <clears throat> So uh, there was uh, a petition that was being done by some fan that you covered uh, for a Hellraiser sequel, right, Rob? Yes. And uh, his name was uh, Jerome Davis, and he had started this uh, petition to get this. Uh, I'm not seeing the movie. His, the director is a Turkish uh, <coughs> director named Can. Yeah. Ever Noel. Ever Noel. Ever mm-hmm. And he directed this popular. Uh, fantasy horror movie called Baskin, and uh, mm-hmm. I, li- I have a in the in the post. I have a link to the trailer. It really looks really cool, and it has that kind of Cobb Barker uh, uh, aesthetic to it, where the it, visuals. It reminds me of that. What's that movie in space? That's kind of people think of like a spiritual successor to Hellraiser. Um, what is that? Event Horizon. Event Horizon. It reminded yeah. me of Event. Yeah, it did. I can see that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and um, certainly gory. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and and. Baskin, I think it's a, that word means like police raid. So it's like police that that go to this. I haven't even seen it either. But it's police that I, go to this house that's that's got a portal to hell in it or something. I just, I you know, someone eats a Baskin Robbins pint and Pinhead shows up. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Every time I hear Baskin, I just think of Baskin Robbins. Oh, please yeah. send us a check, by the way. <laughs> Baskin and Robbins. <laughs> They'll send you some ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, well, you know, I mean, I think the only th- – my opinion about the petition is maybe a little premature because, you know, there's a new Hellraiser that's being done mm-hmm. and 
I'm sure that the Weinsteins are going to wait another three to four years before they do another Hellraiser. So I yeah. just think this is a little uh, premature to come up with a petition like this. But, hey, you know, more power to them if well, the, you know, the director looks like he does a good job. with. The, uh, the interesting thing is the director in, – on Twitter, the director started responding and yeah. saying that uh, he actually sent a script to the Weinstein company a long time ago and they ignored him. Uh, not surprised. Yeah. 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 It's like, what's this? Not an original all. Hellraiser script? No, I'm sorry. We just we we either have our special effects guy write it, or we or we take a script for a different movie and adapt it. Right. So uh, I consider this one to be more like wishful thinking from Jerome Davis. But hey, I'm yeah. glad to sign it and glad to be yeah. you know push this forward if it means that uh, at least send a message to the Weinstein's that the fans are invested in the, the franchise and that they would like to see. Something closer to the original uh, source material, yeah. something that has balls, so to speak. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. Yeah, and something that's not just made to to fulfill an an obligation to keep the rights. Yeah, yeah. Paul Kane's The Disease. Uh, so this was a, a comic adaptation of a story of his, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. There's uh it was a Kickstarter. I have not. I have, I'm not sure if it's. Re- is it ended or? Um, I'm not sure. Let me see real quick. Uh, hang Let's on. See. It says right here. <coughs> I got the video right here, so I'm opening up the campaign. Um, I, I know who started this campaign. Hellbound Media is uh, a, a company created by Mark Adams of the Cenobite.com website. Oh, really? Oh, cool. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And so this has 10 days to go on the campaign, and they've already hit the goal. So they were uh, 600 pounds, uh, Great Britain pounds mm-hmm. was their goal, and they are currently at 906 pounds. That sounds awesome. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's certainly so cheap that, to, yeah. to get a copy of this because they have three-pound PDF uh, infection story that you can get. So yeah, if you're not into the whole book thing, you can just get a PDF of it, I think. Mm. And, uh, yeah. So good luck. Good luck with that. And, uh, Paul Kane's been a friend of the podcast and he's also, uh, a a scholar of Hellraiser. So I'm sure that, uh, he's got his new book coming out, uh, Sherlock Holmes and the servants of hell. Yeah. That's right. right. I'm really looking forward to it's coming out here this summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I need to put. I need. I gotta put that on the side uh, release list. And I keep every time I mean to do that, I can't find the the date. Um, I need to write up an article about how I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you yeah. do that, then you, you can have the release date, and then I can put it on the side. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, best of luck. Glad to see they've they've hit the mark of the 600 pounds, and yeah. uh, hopefully they'll be able to use the the extra cash to make it snappier in terms of like visual and paper and printing and stuff like that so this is also one of the stories it's really cool story from that short story uh, collection that i really enjoyed monsters so you know if you need to go read the actual story for it that's being adapted. yeah and snow uh, the snow the story that he came up recently uh that, that's kind of like i think he's doing the kind of a trilogy right because he had red which was about red riding hood and the big bad wolf and yeah. then he had one about Snow White. And so it feels like he's creating a trilogy here. Yeah. Yes. So that's, that's always good. And uh, Nightbreed Trade Paperback is coming out. Yeah, this was big news. I mean, I, I, we had all thought that Boom, uh, Boom Studios was done with Clive Barker-related properties. But uh, there's a, a collected trade paperback that has all of the, all of the uh, Marvel epic uh, Nightbreed comics. Yeah, 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 but I think this is – they're breaking it up into two volumes. Did I understand? Because I put it in my report. The first volume will be released in late October. Oh, I thought it was oh. one volume with, that was 400 I pages. I think they're breaking it into two. Oh, yeah. They're I like know. 25 issues, right? So that's a lot yeah. of pages. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, yeah. Gonna... And it's also going to include the Hellraiser Nightbreed crossover Jihad. So. Yeah. It's going to be pretty complete. Which is nope. good because those, you know, those were important parts of the – Nightbreed story, and if you don't have those, you kind of get lost. They'll probably yeah. what they'll do is put one in the because that was a two issue series, right? Yeah, they'll probably put one issue of each in the two volumes. The, there were characters in both Nightbreed and Hellraiser that got killed off, and and yeah. Boone merged with or Cabal merged with Baphomet. <laughs> it's 
spoilers. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, if you skip those, all of a sudden, all this crazy stuff has happened, and you don't know why. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. In, in the actual uh, series, the night. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, they have a place in in the series that you know you can't. You got to read those. So yeah, the first volume will be released in late October. So right in time for Halloween. Yeah. That's awesome. I think um, anybody that doesn't have the original comics, and maybe even if you do, the, the, you know, it's good to to show our support for Nightbreed. Oh yeah, sure. And and there are good stories in there, even though <coughs> after a while the Nightbreed series kind of fell a little bit in terms of quality of of writing and art. But closer to the end, you know, you got. Nicholas Vince came in to make some issues, to write some issues, and you got some good artists coming in, and it, it got more interesting. So I do have some pages from uh, from Nightbreed, has, the comic, and it has Rawhead Rex come in there too. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So that's, yeah, it's a four part series, which I like. Yeah, so that's like, really cool. I've always thought kind of Rawhead Rex kind of fit into that world too, because he kind of reminds me of like a berserker type. They they resurrect him by by feeding him a, a Nightbreed baby. Oh, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so, wonderful. It's going to feature a foreword yeah. written by DJ Chichester, who yeah. is also part of the the team that was behind the whole Hellraiser epic Marvel comics. And uh, it, the first volume will be $45. So Mike Manolo filled the covers for those two. Yeah. Creator of Hellboy. Mm-hmm. Right. I, this cover is actually old. It, it's from, oh, it uh, is? Okay. Yeah, it's from an old epic – uh, comic book, oh. I think. Yeah, hopefully they include paperback. those stories in there too. Those oh. epic one-off stories. Yeah, epic one and two. I remember they had some <clears throat> stories. I see, I see a picture on on Rob's blog uh, of Kinski and Boone in a pink Cadillac. Yeah, so that, that's from the epic uh, issue, I think. Yeah, so I hope they include those. Those are the only ones I don't have. Yeah, yeah, I have those. They're fun. They're really fun. I guess that covers most of the news for this episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments, feel free to, to send them to us, you know, um, by Skype or Twitter or or on the, the voicemail. Yeah, or, and, or leave us a comment on iTunes. All right, so uh, stay tuned for that and stay tuned this year for uh, the – that mini doc that we promised for Hellraiser Bloodline. So yeah. I'm still so working on that. Really cool oh, stuff yeah. You've been doing playthrough of, of um, Jericho. Yeah, that's right. I need to get back to that. It's just that I've been trying to come up with a new project of mine, and it's going to be a full-time job. So it, it's – I kind of – I know I fell a little bit on the wayside in terms of that uh, – the walkthrough of Jericho and Undying, but I'm going to work on that soon, I promise, and I'll put it on the BarkerCast YouTube channel, which which you should be subscribed to because we have some good stuff there. We have, like, yes. live coverage of events that we attended. We have, like, Clive Barker talking on the premiere of Nightbreed at the Crest in, uh, Cinema in L.A., so you should go check that YouTube channel out, the well, BarkerCast channel. So, I'll uh, also, uh, once... My class ends and ends on the 10th of May. I'm gonna, <coughs> first thing I'm going to do is write a review of Phil and Sarah's Hellraiser book from the Scarlet Box. Oh, so that was, yeah. Peter Peter Atkins has been begging me to write that. So, Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. Um, Phil and Sarah announced that they're going to do an, another book just about the first Hellraiser. Yeah. Did you guys read that? Yes, I no, did. No, I didn't know if that was if that was already done, you know, with No, the, the because one. the one in the Scarlet Box covers Hellraisers one, two, and three. three oh. Yeah. This is, this just, is gonna yeah. be just about the first one. That's so cool. That's something to look forward to. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Guys, we look we wanna make sure if we're doing anything, you know, that needs some work or anything, just give us some comments. Yeah. We'd love to hear back from the listeners. That's why we do this. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial fan site and podcast that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Films. This podcast and site are a labor of love by the fans for the fans. News, features, and show notes for this episode can be found at www.clivebarkercast.com. Uh, go to iTunes and please leave us a review. Reviews really help us get the word out about Clive Barker. You can also find us on Podomatic, Xbox Music Store, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, 
Double Twist Blackberry and Pocket Cast. Uh, we have a Facebook page, so come on and, and uh, like our Facebook page and, and uh, join the Occupy Media Group for lots of discussion about Nightbreed and other Clive Barker stuff. On Twitter, we're at BarkerCast and at OccupyMidian. Opening theme by Mark Buckle. <laughs>